was when the, the, the news finally broke of the deal. And guys, we, we talk about the fact that he's a big name player, he's proven in the Premier League and all that, but I suppose one of the, the very good points to bring up about Lukaku is he was superb for Everton last season, scoring goals against the smaller clubs as well as the bigger clubs in the Premier League. And perhaps we didn't do so well against the smaller clubs last season, which is where things need to perhaps improve a bit in terms of goals. He will put them chances away, but we also need him in the big games. And now he's in a bigger club. Again, I said it, I think it's the fifth time I'm saying surrounded by better players. It makes you improve, it makes you step your game up. We're going to be in control most of the part of the games, especially at Old Trafford, and the chances will appear. For me, it's a great signing. We don't need to protect him. We don't need to send a protective fee. That's the way, unfortunately, today's market is. But you know you're going to get goals with Romelu Lukaku. And look at his age. It feels like he's been playing for 15 years, Mikel, and he's still just turned 24. So for me, great addition, especially coming for the first training day, being with the team, being one of his closest friends, Paul Pogba. It makes you blend in, melt in into the group much easier, and it helps. Indeed, and we'll actually hear Paul Pogba interviewing Romelu Lukaku a little bit later on on MUTV. You certainly don't want to miss that. What well, language? Uh, <laughs> but the, well, in English, but yeah, they, they have their own, seven has their own language, don't they, a little bit as well, which is great. We'll see that in part three of this show, so do stay with us for that. We'll, uh, we'll concentrate for now on the training that's going on behind us, and uh, obviously we talk about the fact that, that he's only 24. It's a five-year deal with an option for another year, and I think... Boyan's right. It feels like he's been around for a long time in the game. Obviously playing for Chelsea, having, uh, I think, 15 appearances for Chelsea, on loan at West Brom, uh, plenty of goals for them, tons of goals for Everton, of course, well, Everton's top Premier League goal scorer. Yeah, he was lacking uh, opportunities to play at Chelsea. That's why uh, the move to Everton made sense. At that time, uh, it was Jose Mourinho who allowed Lukaku to, to move on, and it was a good choice because he was a starter. He, he's had a lot of opportunities to play, a lot of game time and a lot of services. Everton is, um, is an attacking team, so um, he's had uh, yeah, chances to, to shine and he, he took them. So in terms of uh, goal ratio, I think he's proved uh, what he's capable of. Lights in big games and, and high pressure games in Champions League where that's going to be a step higher, another test for him. But I think uh, when you're international playing for Belgium, um, there is no, uh, nothing that's going to stop you. And surely the, the pressure is, um, is a bit higher, but he's, he's used to it. So I'm, uh, I'm confident for, for Remo to, to deliver on the big stage. Yeah, and a lot was made when uh, Jose Mourinho sold Juan Mata to Manchester United. And of course, then became Manchester United manager. And people said, well, the first player out the door will be Juan Mata because he's already sold him once. That's obviously not happened because he's still here. He sold Lukaku at Chelsea. In a way, it's, it's sort of the perfect scenario for Jose, isn't it? As a manager, you see a, a player, you let him go, but you then have him back when he's a bit older, a bit more experienced, and certainly with Lukaku, a much stronger player now, physically and in terms of goals, than when he left Chelsea. Of course, Maybe there was a buyback close. Yeah, buyback close <laughs> as well. But if, if you look at Lukaku's point of view, think about being getting sent away by a manager. See if Mikel was my manager. And then a couple of years later, Mikel takes me back. As a player, I will grow. It means that I've actually put all that behind me. I've proven myself to him that I'm good enough to play for a big club that's challenging, both in the Champions League and in the Premier League. So it's a great boost of confidence, even if he scored them goals. And he scored 25 in 37 appearances last season. Yes, the goals, some of them were the 3 nil, 4 nil, or 5 nil goals. But I don't agree with some English pundits. I'm reading papers, I'm listening to them. Yeah, but can he do it in the big games? He will do it here because Manchester United are bigger than Everton. They are bigger than West Brom and just his presence makes me uncomfortable as a centre half to play Lukaku that he doesn't have to score but you always have to keep your eye on him it means it opens up for other players to improve even more and he will give you them runs that you need and even prove like so Martial, Rashford, um, Mkhitaryan and of course Pogba is going to hopefully play a little bit closer to him during the season. He is obviously going to be expected to score goals, we know he can do uh, from his time in the Premier League so far. When we talk about goals generally, do we need to see more players sort of stepping up and scoring goals? Last season we had Zlatan obviously bagging an awful lot for United but now obviously with Wayne leaving the club, Zlatan injured at the moment and obviously at the moment not a part of the Manchester United plan for the future who knows what might happen for him we look at the numbers of goals Rashford 11 last season Mkhitaryan 11 stepping up Mata with 10 do we need to see more in double figures? Yeah ideally you would like to see the, the, the goals spread out first match yeah. Romero doesn't play really? Play David 45 yeah. and the kid 45 yeah. second match David doesn't play 
play the kid 45 and Romero 45. Okay. And third match against Man City, doesn't play Joel and play David 45 and Romero 45. Thank you. You heard it. Here, you heard it here first. We, you heard it here first. Gaffer, and you're in for Paddy. Yeah. He wants to see you on the track, Paddy. You've got, you, you, yeah. you got a chance. <laughs> yeah. First day of training in the, in the blistering heat at the UCLA. Michael Carrot here alongside. I make it. This is your twelfth pre-season with Manchester United, and, and the first without Wayne Rooney. Is it the uh, end of an era in a way? Um. But listen. Obviously, Wayne leaving the clubs. Um, it's a big deal, you know, he's, he's been such a massive part of this club since he stepped foot in it, obviously since his debut. It was an incredible debut and, um, you know, I'm sad to see him go. I understand why he's gone and, I, and, and we obviously fully support him and wish him well because um, he's been an unbelievable servant to the club and left a legacy that's, that's incredible. So, um, yeah, great times, you know, everything comes to an end, unfortunately, and, and, and yet, like you say, it's, a, it's the end of, of Man United for Wayne, but... Um, I'm sure you'll go on to, to have a successful end to his career, and, uh, but you've certainly be missed by, by a lot of us here. Things do change and things do move on as we see. We saw Romelu Lukaku arriving, it's now official, he's a Manchester United player. You would have faced him, I'm sure, over, over the years. Are you glad to have him as a teammate now? Yeah, yeah, certainly. I've tried to tackle him a few times, he got nowhere near him, so um, at least I won't have to do that too often. But he's, um, listen, he's, we've, we've seen what he can bring to us. He's, um, He's, he's a big guy, he's, he's got a real presence, um, he's tough to play against and he scores goals and, and obviously that's what we're going to need from him, that's what he's going to bring and um, he, you know, I'm sure he'll have a great time here. That was probably the one thing that was missing last season in, in certain games, getting the, the goals. Um, do you think he, he, he's the man for that? He's got more than 20, I think, three years running. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to look to him to, you know, to take everything on his shoulders. I think, okay. we've, we've, you know, he's, he's obviously, that's why he's brought here to, to, to help with that, that end of the pitch and to score and create goals. and. Um, and we've obviously, as, as a team and as, as attacking players, you know, everyone needs to chip in uh, and score goals and share the load a little bit to, to take the pressure off each individual. So, um, but I'm sure, yeah, of course, he's he's, he's going to be the um, the one we look to to, to score goals, and, and I'm sure he'd do that. Finally, you still enjoying pre-season? I mean, you've done a lot of them over the years. 90 degree, 90 degree heat. How does it feel? Yeah, I just my brother texted me last night. He said it's the 20th pre-season. So. Um, it's quite a lot. I mean, it's coming out here today. The first thing that strikes is the heat. It's, yeah. it's incredibly hot, but um, great setup, though. Eh? It's a terrific setup. So um, we've got no excuses. You know, we'll, we'll prepare well. We'll look forward to it. First day is always a little bit exciting yeah. to get back and look forward to it. You know, we've, we've all done bits of work on holidays and away from it, but today's the, the real deal. So um, let's get started. We'll let you go on with it. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks a lot.